from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I'm Carla Gonzalez. This is From the South. We start in Nicaragua. The government and the opposition have agreed on a roadmap to negotiate an end to a crisis that gripped the country for most of last year. The news comes following five days of peace talks mediated by the Catholic Church. The government has previously said they wanted peace for its people and to restore the economy. The opposition has asked for the release of jail protesters and early elections. According to official numbers, just over 250 people died in last year's violent protests. Central American organizations have taken a stand against cross-border mining. They demand new regional agreements to suspend these practices, which they say only benefit transnational corporations. The Central American Alliance Against Mining presented the results of a study carried out in four countries in the region, focusing on strategies to defend the environment and human rights against the impact of extractivism mining. They say there need to be new agreements to ban cross-border mining. There has been an advance in cross-border mining, especially in protected areas. For example, there are 47 protected areas that are directly or indirectly impacted by mining activities. We also found that within these four countries, around 150 surface water sources are affected, with our accounting for the impact generated by these activities in terms of groundwater. The possible reopening of the Cerro Blanco mine on the border between Guatemala and El Salvador is one of the examples of transborder pollution, since the Ostua River flows into the Ouija Lake, shared by both countries. This mine is 15 kilometers away from the border. It has polluted water, which is allegedly extracted to clean tunnels in the Ostua River basin, which is part of the high basin of the Lempa River. In that sense, this is a real threat. The study reveals that 23 indigenous communities of the Central American region are affected. This is a fight for which the indigenous leader Lenka, Berta Cáceres, was murdered three years ago. And it's also linked to the recent legal process against 12 environmental activists in the Tocoa Department of Colón in Honduras. We are here to demand the release of our comrades, who have been detained illegally by the Honduran army, and also to demand justice in the case of Berta Cáceres in Honduras. Although metal mining has been banned in El Salvador since 2017, licenses for mining projects granted by other countries affect the entire Central American territory. The Venezuelan foreign minister has criticized the renewal of the national emergency decree in the United States against Venezuela. Jorge Arreaza says this is a historic mistake, started by former President Barack Obama and now continued by Donald Trump. The foreign minister says the executive order is nothing but an attack on the Bolivarian Republic. He once again urged the Trump administration to not intervene in Venezuela's affairs. Venezuela's Vice President Delcy Rodriguez has wrapped up her diplomatic visit to Russia. We have more in this report. The strengthening of strategic relations between Russia and Venezuela serves to benefit Venezuela's recovery, growth and economic prosperity program. The recent contract signed by Venezuela's Vice President in the Russian capital will see expansion of cooperation between the two countries. Russia will continue to work with Venezuelan authorities in resolving economic and social problems, including through various humanitarian response mechanisms. We think that the best way to help Venezuelans is to expand pragmatic and mutually beneficial collaboration. The great economic and political potential of Russia is also complemented by Venezuela's potential in the fields of energy, science, commerce, finance, and also in the military. Meanwhile, the political factions of the Russian state Duma have described the United States' interference in Venezuelan internal affairs as a violation of international law. 
We emphasize that relationships should be developed based on principles of friendship, equity, trust and non-interference in internal affairs. Russia is a power at the forefront of the geopolitical reconfiguration of the world, a new morphology, a world of equilibrium, a world of justice, a counter-hegemonic world. Moscow continues its rejection of the plans by the United States which seek to change governments in the Bolivarian nation. In Venezuela, peace will be imposed and will win. The Venezuelan people, the vast political majorities, even the democratic opposition sectors are against these plans. We welcome the decision of the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, who is willing to hold dialogue with all of the political forces of Venezuela, with the opposition, without the need for prerequisites. During the next Russia-Venezuela Intergovernmental Mixed Commission, more than 200 signed agreements between governments will be reviewed. In other news, the Colombian Carnival of Barranquilla has come to an end with a grand parade. After four days of revelry, one of the largest carnivals in the world ended with the symbolic funeral of the character known as Joselito. Joselito symbolizes the joy of carnival and he dies due to excess drinking and partying. The carnival in Barranquilla was started in the 19th century by locals and it was declared an intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO in 2003. <laughs> Joselito's death on Carnival Tuesday symbolizes the death of a person from Barranquilla, who drank and partied a lot during Carnival. It means four days of joy, four days of purge. And this is the moment when we cry, because it's the end of Carnival. Barranquilla's Carnival is an example of three cultures converging, the black, the white, and the indigenous from America. And Mardi Gras festivities took hold of New Orleans in the United States. The final day of Carnival went down with a treat, with the cheery festival goers who enjoyed a beverage while watching the colorful parade. And tens of thousands in Trinidad and Tobago hit the streets of Port of Spain on Tuesday to end the two-day celebration of Carnival. Let's look at this colorful festivity. Months of preparation and anticipation all coming down to this. Carnival in Trinidad and Tobago has been dubbed by its citizens as the greatest show on earth. This is spectacular. We have been blessed. We have been blessed with a sunshine state. And, you know, look at the sky now. Beautiful sunshine, fantastically made costumes. The music is, is terrific, you know. And it, 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 it really rubs the soul in a lovely way. So, Trinidad Carnival is spectacular the beauty and history of the mass spans decades and historical figures like the stilt walkers or boko jumbies and the fancy indians are integral to the annual parade of bands for many the epitome of carnival is crossing this stage the savannah stage and for Kes de Frontala, whose song savannah grass is taking over the airwaves as a potential road march or people's choice song of 2019. It just shows that no matter what, we still dig in deeper and we still have more to go, you know, with us. And this year with the song and love for the band and the success of the concert and, yes. you know, it just, today is Great just a... success. Yes, thank you. Yes. So today is a peace. Carnival ends officially at midnight on Tuesday, ending months of euphoria on the Twin Island State and beginning the 40-day Lenten period up until Easter Sunday. Kijan Haynes, Telesur, Port of Spain. We have more stories coming up. We'll be back. in all the events is there in our people united for each transmission and in tune we bet on a new Latin American vision now we are also accompanied by the Caribbean people of St. Kitts and Nevis 
each day working for the best understanding and communication. Telesur, the new source from South America and the Caribbean. An occasion to enjoy the cultural diversity that defines our South American essence. Come along to find out the story behind these personalities, traditions, and artistic expressions that unite us as a whole. Real Lives, Friday, only on Telesur. The ruling world order has always subjugated the masses. But who are the actors behind every move? What are their real interests? We analyze every move on Critical Move. Weekdays, only on Telesur. Welcome back. Over 15,000 pounds of conch snails have been confiscated from a fishing boat operating in Jamaica's waters. The vessel, which was flying the Dominican Republic flag, was intercepted by the Jamaican Defense Force Coast Guard. A total of 57 poachers were found on board, all from the DR. They have been arrested and are expected to be charged. Also in the DR, a number of social organizations have called for an environmental emergency to be declared in the country. Scientific organizations are demanding that measures be put in place to stop mining, pollution and the destruction of vegetation in mountainous regions. They're also calling for the environment minister's immediate dismissal. And over 1,000 cattle have died as a result of the months-long drought in the Dominican Republic. The affected northwest region has also suffered roughly a million dollars in losses. Last month, authorities launched emergency measures to help the agriculture sector. The Federation of Cuban Women has started its 10th forum in Havana. More than 360 delegates from 15 regions will participate in the three-day event. During the meeting, they will discuss topics such as the role of women in the economy, social work, and gender equality. The organization was created in 1960 to fight for women's rights. And close to 20,000 public workers in Peru have been sent home so far in 2019. Now the representing union is demanding that the rights of those workers are respected. Elizabeth spent 11 years cleaning the streets of the Miraflores district in the Peruvian capital of Lima. But when the mayor decided to change the private company in charge of the street cleaning service, she was fired without any guarantees. Right now, she doesn't know how she will manage to feed her three children. The kids start school soon and I am a single mother. I need to take care of them. I lived for my job and I do not have any. I feel very bad. How am I going to survive now? I will look for a job in the streets. I will beg for help because I do not know what to do. My children need to eat. 250 municipal workers were fired by the company in Nova. Neither the company nor the municipality government has assumed any responsibility. A decree signed late last year by President Martin Vizcarra makes it easier for companies to dismiss large groups of workers. We are mainly women. There are pregnant women, single mothers, widows. This is violence against women. The mayor seems to have hired another company, Petramax. There are over 80,000 persons working at various municipalities through private companies. That's according to the Municipalities Workers Federation, and these employees can be fired at any given moment. This is all a consequence of the neoliberal model. The capitalist model does just seek the interests of transnational companies. They do not care about workers' rights. They don't care about workers' stability because they are concerned about their own benefits, especially with what we are now seeing, its corruption. 
The Workers' Confederation of Peru's labor union says labor rights as an expense. It even allows several companies, such as those in agricultural sectors, to deny employees basic labor rights. And Peru has opened a military base in the Amazon region to tackle illegal mining. This is the second phase of an operation that began in February. The military previously freed the Madre de Dios area from criminal gangs dedicated to illegal mining. The base is now meant to prevent criminals from going back. Thousands of hectares were lost last year due to illegal mining, especially coal mining. We have come here to stay as long as necessary. We have been here for the first phase, and now we're moving into the second, which according to our plan will be six months, and then we will make readjustments. Really what we have is a large development project for the Madre de Dios region. Part of that involves recovering all of this area degraded by illegal mining activities. But we are also trying to develop other productive activities in the other parts of Madre de Dios. A strike at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Kenya has grounded flights, leaving hundreds of passengers stranded. The strike came after a labor dispute between Kenya Aviation Workers Union and Kenya Airways. The airline advised customers flying after 11 a.m. not to go to the airport. This was done through a statement on Twitter. Union leader Moss Ndiema was arrested as a court ruled against the industrial strike. The president of Senegal, Macky Sall, has been officially declared winner of the February 24th vote. The Constitutional Council confirmed his re-election with 58% of the votes. The opposition has rejected the results but decided not to appeal. President Sall has made a call for dialogue. My role is to unite us around our shared ideals. That's why I extend a hand to all to hold and open a constructive dialogue in the higher interests of the nation. I will make proposals along those lines after my swearing-in ceremony on April 2nd. I invite to this Republican dialogue all the stakeholders of the nation without exclusion. A dialogue in which my predecessors, the President Abdul Diouf and Abdullaye Wade, may contribute. Let's take one last break, but stay with us. We are present at every event of where our nations are staring. We believe in a new global vision, united in every broadcasting. We keep expanding our horizons and working on a closer and better communication. Now, in Grenada, Telesur, the new source from South America and the Caribbean. The life is full of moments. Moments of fight, moments of hope, moments that present, moments that you can live in. Telezur Documentaries, Sundays, only on Telezur. Welcome back. The Scaramagas refugee camp in Greece is one of the largest and most difficult places to be allowed to film. After years of trying to get permission to film inside the camp, our Terzur correspondent Hibai Arbide finally got access to the camp. Scaramangas is Greece's largest refugee camp. After three years of trying to get permission to film, we finally got the government permit that allows us inside. Very few news outlets have managed to get the permit. Inside, we meet Nariman who was sleeping rough on the streets of Athens for several months before moving in here. He's now been here a year. I just ask Europe for one thing, that it opens the borders and if not, then it should help people living in refugee camps inside Greece. Hiro has been living here for three years with her husband. 
two sons and daughter. She underwent six surgeries in her native Kurdistan in Iraq. Her family fled the Islamic State and she believed that her health would be better in Europe. But that has not been the case as she is now suffering from psychological problems as a result of living in the refugee camp. The living conditions here are very bad. Apart from what you can see, there are often fights that children witness. It's a bad situation all around. Hiro and her husband have opened a small bakery made of plastics and pallets next to where they sleep. It's so they can earn a bit more money than the 150 euros they get from the state for being a refugee. But more than anything, it's so they can spend their time doing something productive. I didn't expect to live like this in Europe. They have rejected our asylum claim and now we're appealing against it. The refugee camp, like all camps, was meant to be a temporary solution. But it has now been up for years and the problem has become chronic. <laughs> Currently, there are over 2,000 people living here. According to the refugees, the living conditions are even worse now than when it opened. However, small businesses continue to grow. The majority of them are shops selling basic goods for survival. Some of the first businesses have really taken off, such as this shop located at the pier. Uh, it's only people. Only people here and food, uh, just uh, a falafel and chicken. Due to the length of time it takes to get the permit to film here, news outlets have stopped reporting on the plight of the people in this camp. We are here to show how struggling refugees have become enterprising. Sixteen people have been killed in a suicide bomb attack outside a construction company in Afghanistan's Halalabad. According to a local official, two suicide bombers self-detonated and then gunmen opened fire. Among the dead are several guards and five of the attackers. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for this attack. The U.S. Senate is, is expected to approve a resolution rejecting Donald Trump's national emergency declaration. The Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says opponents have the 51 votes necessary to pass the resolution. However, he added that Trump will likely veto this vote. Trump's emergency declaration allows him to divert public funds to build a wall along the country's border with Mexico. New research is showing the scope of the mass incarceration crisis in the United States. According to a new study from Cornell University, 45% of people in the U.S. have had a family member jailed or imprisoned. And the numbers are worse for African Americans, rising near 63%. For the Latino population, it's 48%. And meanwhile, 42% of Caucasians have had a family member jailed. An HIV-positive man in Britain has become the second known adult to be cleared of the AIDS virus. His doctors made the announcement at a conference in Seattle. The news comes three years after the man received a bone marrow transplant from an HIV-resistant donor and more than 18 months after he came off antiretroviral drugs. Some 37 million people are currently infected with HIV and the AIDS pandemic has killed about 35 million people worldwide since it began in the 1980s. It's, that it, it's been 10 years since the first one was reported um, without any cases in between. And uh, therefore, there are a number of questions that were asked as to um, uh, what was special about the first case. Was it uh, a patient factor that was not repeatable? Um, or was it something about the regimen? Or was it the radiation that he had? Um, uh, and also, so could it be repeated? I think it's important to have, to have repeated it, potentially. Okay, in my case, my case is important because, uh, because it proves that HIV can be cured. Um, and uh, how, how it's cured is um, totally up to the um, brilliant scientists that are work, medical scientists who are working for H an HIV cure. Um, and uh, I think that um, in the near future, hopefully, um, that, uh, that methods will become, come up that can be applied to everyone who has HIV, HIV. Now let's look at more stories from around the world. Speaking out for the first time since his indictment last month on sexual abuse charges, musician R. Kelly has denied all allegations of sexually abusing women. I did not do this. This is not me, he said. The 52-year-old pleaded not guilty to 10 counts of aggregated criminal sexual abuse. Wrestling has taken a new twist in India as women pick the sport up despite being considered only for males.
Nonetheless, this perspective started to change when Sakshi Malik secured a bronze medal in 2016 Olympic Games to become the first Indian woman to win an Olympic medal. On top of this, a biopic of two wrestling sisters who are Commonwealth medalists became one of the highest grossing Bollywood films of all time. In India, women are not encouraged or supported as much as men. Boys can do anything, but girls are stopped from doing most things. But these days, some families are becoming progressive and they do support their daughters, especially in wrestling. And with women winning medals, the government is also supporting us financially, so we don't have to be stressed out about money. If this kind of support continues, then women can bring Olympic medals in all the weight categories. The self-styled world's first commercially available flying car has debuted at Geneva's International Motor Show in Switzerland. The three-wheeled vehicle function as a gyrocopter deploying fully retractable rotors. It will reportedly be commercially available in 2020. And for our last story, a baby tiger and a baby lion have hit it off at a zoo in Sochi, Russia, becoming best buddies. The fascinating felines have become inseparable as they play in the park and even enjoy meals together. And if you're worried that this could go wrong at some point, they aren't expected to be together for long. The zoo will put them in separate enclosures as soon as they turn six months old. But for now, they're the perfect pair. And with that joyful story, we come to the end of this news brief. But you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And you can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you for watching.